Well, 2004 rolls around, and that was the year that I met you. I was a mixtape DJ. Um, I remember that the Tupac Rap Phenomenon mixtape was out, and it was like the biggest thing in the hip-hop world. I had won mixtape of the year. And uh, I remember Mike Lynn actually said Dre wanted to sign me, and that never happened. <laughs> it was the biggest like loss of my life. Right, yeah, point. Michael, Mike Lynn's Mike Lynn's he's legendary for stuff. this type of thing. I'm not the only person he's, he's pulled this on. Um, so I remember I met New Jersey Devil, and I'm like, "Yo, um, we should do a mix." And he's rolling with you, so I'm like, "Oh, we should do a mixtape with Game." He's like, "Oh, we should do a mixtape and a DVD." And I'm like, "Hmm, never thought about that before." I had this old ass, you know, mini DV camera, uh -huh. and I'm like all right, let's just pick it up and just start filming. And I, I flew out to LA. I went to your house and we kind of powwowed and came up with this idea of, you know, the devil's advocate. It was going to be, you know, one disc was going to be a mixtape and the other disc was going to be a DVD. And I was just rolling around with you, studio to studio and everything else like that. And um, I remember you had performed at MTV for... Uh, how we do because West Side Story was already out, right? Right, and that was the first okay. Like, now game is now being cemented. Like, this is a, a dope song, a very West Coast song. But how we do was the hit song. I remember we went to MTV, me, DJ Quick, and I think New Jersey Devil got caught smoking weed in the bathroom at MTV, and we all got kicked out. But DJ Quick was the DJ, so <laughs> he convinced yeah. them not to kick him out because right. he was actually DJing right. your set. But it was a very, it was a very interesting time, you know, being at your house and seeing how this is all coming together. And it was like, yo, like you could tell that something big was about to happen. Now, before you actually dropped your album, JT put out the untold story. Right. Did that piss you off? No, that was the demo. But okay, but, but the fact that he commercially released it yeah. no, before your album. No, nah, I wasn't nah. tripping because uh, I had love for JT for, uh, you know, and still got love for him. It's like a love-hate relationship with me and him because he feel like he don't get enough props, uh, you know, for, you know, helping kickstart my career. But I always get his nigga his props okay. um, when when he deserve them. Uh, some of the shit that he tried to take credit for is just absurd. So then I got to hold my own ground. But at the end of the day, man, JT and game, what we did, uh, you know, in San Francisco and what we did in the Bay, Bay Area from uh, 2002 to like 2000. 2004 um, was legendary, especially with Sean T on the production, and you can't never take that away, no matter how nobody feels, because the untold story was uh, wrote the passage for the beginning of my career, and so JT did all the footwork, I did all the rapping, and you know that Ghazi, uh, who is you know the owner of Empire, mm -hmm. was my engineer. For the oh, he was your engineer, Gazi. Oh, wow! I never yeah. knew this. So before I, before Gazi was, you know, making all his money and signing everybody these deals, I was screaming at Gazi, you know, out the booth, man. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But so Gazi is my brother too. We just got a history, and like like I said. A lot of people don't know know a lot about what I went through and the relationships that I made and the things that it took for me to get here. But like I said, it doesn't matter which way I went when I saw the fork in the road, I was going to be successful. Okay, now your first album, the documentary, that wasn't the original title. Nah, it was NWA Volume One, I believe. I had Nigga right, with, yeah, it was right. Nigga it was with Attitude Volume One, exactly. Um, but didn't Easy E's Widow have a problem with it? No, she didn't. Have, I don't think she had a problem with it at all because T Tamika has, and I've never met Tamika. Um, only talked on the phone once, but. Anything that I needed with easy and anything that I've needed cleared over the years, she she just cleared it. So mm. it wasn't we didn't have a problem back then. If she had a problem with anybody at all. And I'm I, again, I'm just uh, guessing that it might have been with like Dr. Dre, maybe because they had history, easy Dre. I don't know. But she uh, I just changed the title on my own because I when I came up with the documentary and then me and Jonathan Mannion were getting all this dope footage. And again, after doing the things with you and like, you know, like just document everything. Thing. I just felt like it was a documentary to my life. So when I ran that title by Dre, we both, uh, you know, we both loved that more than uh, NWA Volume 1. 